Um, welcome everybody and thank you for coming and for staying. And um, yeah, so I'm Eva Barrois de Cavell. Um, I'm the curator of this show and uh, is Wura Natasha Ogunji and she's uh, the artist. <laughs> so this is clear. <laughs> um, the first thing I would like to discuss with you and the audience is um, this question because it's what we just experienced of an after moment of the performance because um, if I love you, the performance you just saw, there is this beginning and first part that is in the room and then there is this after part that is behind the curtain. And this is something new in your work and something you developed because you realized that this after moment with the performers was extremely important. So if you can maybe, yeah. Um, so yeah, this was, um, I ha I've done this piece a few times before, but um, solo several times, and then with a group of uh, three other women. And um, as we were talking about the experience over the course of several days, one of them said to me, you know, the most powerful thing about the performance for me was the time that we spent in the room after the performance, when we were cutting the thread off of our faces and the faces get marked, and we were having this conversation. And I realized that that space is a very um, exciting and generative and creative space um, outside of the audience and outside of the kind of energy and witnessing that happens with an audience. And I also started to think about that space as a place of uh, not knowing so that um, there's this idea that we can know everything in the world and um, we can read about it or talk to people or listen to things um, or have um, witnessed things and then we know something about it and if we don't know we need to know but I've been thinking a lot about the space of not knowing something and especially as a person that lives in two places the US um, and Nigeria being of two countries I realized that there's, it's not always easy to translate. And, um, and some things you just can't translate. You, you can't explain an experience if you're not in a particular context. So, so then I just became really excited about like a place that was a place where uh, the audience couldn't go. So it's called a place you can never go because it's a, um, an experience that only the performers have and that only they will um, know that, that after place. And uh, to, to continue on this um, question of um, a kind of privacy that is powerful, uh, in August we had together these di discussions through emails uh, because I was writing the text for the exhibition and um, you sent me um, a quotation of, an interview, a link to an interview, and I would like to quote um, part of it. So it, these are words by uh, uh, Madukada, and she's, she's a writer, and she, she said, women and people of color are often boxed in by publishers and cultural institutions. There are a limited number of things that we are supposed to talk about or like or want. An acquaintance of mine, an African-American college professor, remarks that her colleagues listen very closely when she talks about race, but they are uninterested in what she might say about gardening or architecture or grandchildren. And um, I love that question. <laughs> and uh, I thought it was very interesting because it was really my idea for this show. When I, because the global thing around was feminism, intersectional feminism, and I just wanted to have like a black woman, but just an artist doing whatever she wanted to do in the space. And the works could have been about flowers or I don't know what. So I would like to ask you 
also why you sent me this <laughs> thing. But no, I mean, I know, but <laughs> if you can share with the audience and also, um, yeah, maybe say something about this question of, um, yeah, as a black woman, just being able to speak of whatever interests you and this being maybe more radical than always speaking of the fact of being what you are. Of identity. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've been having this conversation a lot recently, like with Kathy mm. Ann, <laughs> <laughs> um, which is really about, for me, it's this question about um, pushing the, my creativity and art and experience in the world as a human to, to like the outer limits and thinking about um, as a, because I've chosen to be an artist, um, what is the, the language that I want to create and kind of the how can I expand and what is like the deepest place I can go to. And for me, that is a place of, that has to happen in a place of complete freedom. And so I have to kind of let go of all of the circumstances of the world in order to like push and go into that place. And so it's kind of like, um, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you might be a woman, but you're not like, oh, I'm a woman, you know? You, you, you are, like, the way we experience the world isn't defined by language, you know? It's, it does, like, it tries to define us, but there's another experience of being a human in a physical body, making things, marking things, um, creating something that I can't even imagine what it is right now. So part of that, that the reason I sent that is because I, I wanted to be able to freely create and to to, and, and not only that, but like, I, f I feel as an artist, I have a responsibility mm. to continue to stretch the language and to make something mm. new and to not repeat narratives that aren't my narratives. So I may have a particular experience. Like I was, the other day I went for this really awesome run and I got out, actually when I first started, I got into the street and, um, and I was just like, yeah, it's so beautiful. And I had my music on and uh, this guy, he was on his bike and he, start, he uh, said this like, he started speaking to me in Spanish and he said this racial slur. And I was like, I kind of like laughed to myself because I was like, this is so weird. Like I'm having like a perfect experience in this place. And then this guy was just like, Blah, 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 blah. And so I just, I was like, well, like the two thoughts that went through my head were like, well, I'm really fast. And so like, I just kept running. And I was like, also like, well, I, I know how to break someone's nose. So if I need to do that, I can do that. But I was like, but I don't, but I'm just like, want to have this great run. So, so I just had a great run, you know, and he just eventually disappeared. But I was thinking about how like, that could have been like a thing, you know? Like I could have been like, ah, I can't go running now, and now oh, I have to deal with this guy, and I have to go, and I have to come in here and tell everybody, blah, 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 blah. But like, I just, I went to the park, and I just like, you know, my mind went to all these places about like physicality and fresh air, and like how fast you can run, and, um, and crossing the streets against the light, and like all these like amazing things. And so I just think that like, there's something, even though things happen to us, there's something really nice about like keeping on our journey and our narrative and our language. And, um, and you, because you read that thing, it reminded me of this, uh, this email that a friend sent recently. And it's kind of about that. And it, hmm. it's, uh, so she, she's an artist as well. And we have these, um, We've had this dialogue for many years. So she sends me this thing. Why do people make art? What is, this what is this obsession with preaching about a thing, about a feeling, about your thoughts on life? Fuck your thoughts on, fuck your thoughts. I mean, seriously, no one gives a shit. 
I'm so tired of it all. All of the blank art is about. And that word about is um, in capital letters. I wish more art could be art, just art, something that came out and asked questions and then was formed into some better version of itself. Something that was not so heavy and loaded with everything wrong, not so burdened with people's shit, not so self-righteous, something pure, question mark, more raw, question mark. So I've been thinking a lot about that, like what is the place that we can get to that is something more than we even know in this moment. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe it's a bit like the same question, or <laughs> but you also uh, said me um, this thing I want to share with the audience was you told me taking up a space in a performative manner is a way to counter the fact that our thinking space and creative space as black people and women, must always return to violence as our main narratives. Well, I think it's just what you explained, but <laughs> I had yeah, it in my yeah, notebook. Yeah. Um, so, something totally different, and speaking of the works, um, I would like you to say a word about how you came to this technique of stitching, and uh, if it has, because I don't know, <laughs> a specific Thanks to you, and but really how it started. Yeah, yeah. Well, it it was very um, kind of ordinary. My I, my brother and sister are also artists, and um, my sister, she was she like just stitched these words on her shirt, and I saw it, and I really liked it. And I've always loved thread. And my mother, when we were little, she would sew things for us, and she tried to teach us to sew. We were not really into it at all. But, um, but I was into the materials of it, the materiality of it. And so when, when I saw these words that my sister had stitched, I then, uh, the first thing I made was um, a, like a, it's a drawing, but also has text on paper. And then I just like fell in love with this thing. It was like, because the paper is like, it's like a, it's, fla it's flat and it's, it's, um, it's certain, but then the thread uh, interrupts that, you know? And it's three-dimensional, but not really. And it's like a mark, but it's subtle. But it also has a kind of like weight to it. And, um, and I just love the, I love the feeling. I was talking about this at dinner last night. Like I love the feeling of, um, the, just the feeling of stitching through the paper, you know? Like you like the feeling of knitting or something. It's just like very satisfying and, and um, so it's, it's something that I, um, I, I seem to come back to all the time. And I, I was explaining that at dinner, like I, I, I was like, no, I want to make big oil paintings, you know, and take up space. And so my sister, she gave me this whole um, lesson in oil painting. It was so great. And I was like, I'm going to be a great oil painter. <laughs> and then... Um, I just was like, I don't like this at all, you know, like the pro, the, it wasn't like a sensuality that I loved, and so I think like the sensuality of the threads and the, the stitch and the line and the knot is just like, I just love it so much, yeah. I, I had my uh, small experience of it when I had to put the lights on <laughs> your drawing because it was like becoming like two-dimensional or three-dimensional, and I was watching at a distance, trying to see how we can have the different layers, and it was so tricky to put it, so I just, <laughs> I yeah. yeah. Um, and another question, like, really about the, the works is, um, would be nice to hear you on the, how you articulate the different thing, just the drawings, the performances, and the videos, and, how, yeah. How they're like different yeah. for me? How or they are different or how they are like... Conceptualized? Yeah, or how the three different things are, is it like something you separate a lot or from a drawing comes the performance or the performance is totally something else or this yeah. kind of things? Yeah. Or the video pieces because this is also new, I mean, 
it's an old one, but you did this new installation. Yeah. And I think it's also something new, so if you can. Usually the, um, the performances, I have a question and I, and the, and I know that I can, well, I, I, I want to answer it in the body. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's a kind of physicality or um, endurance um, or, or, and also I'm interested in the way things, the body looks moving through the frame of the, of the, yeah, the frame, like, so like the filmic resonances of the body moving through a frame. Um, so that's a totally separate thing. And it's usually like a question and it has a very specific physical answer. Like the performance is really clear. Okay, I'm gonna do this thing. Or what happens if I, you know, wrap the thread. But the drawing is much more of a, um, and sometimes that's a collective process, the performance. The drawing is much more like just total alone time, me in the paper, and or I'll have this question like, what would it be like to explode the body? And like, how can I, um, how can I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that song, though. <laughs> um, uh, how can I... How, do, how does that look on the page to explode the form? Um, and then I just... You know, it just kind of tells you things, and you tell it things, and then it goes like that. Yeah, and I have... I have and, and this will be my last question. It's more like a comment. It just... Yesterday, I just... And this to what I really love <laughs> in your drawings, I think one of the things I really love, and it was that I can feel it is really like um, you enjoying a moment with yourself, just what you said. <laughs> and um, I think it's really, I, I can strongly feel that. Mm -hmm. And it's not something I can feel in many artworks. And I love the fact that I can feel you enjoy this time and the process and not the result. And I think it makes me feel good, this, because it reminds me of time, times I have just for myself, just doing things, and it's not so often. <laughs> and um, yeah, I think that's what I really, Love and I think also it's something yeah that is quite rare today in the art world. Um, for instance, I work with, with this artist Billy Zangewa. Maybe you know her work, and she's from South Africa, and it's the same thing that I love in her work. And I know she sometimes it takes like four or three months to do the work, and it's really like something she loves, and I can feel it. And it's very long, and all the collectors are like, we want an artwork from her. I said, yeah, but it will last like one year. You just have to wait, something like that. So, yeah, but it's more a comment, but maybe you want to see <laughs> uh, I think that's really beautiful. I mean, I, I, the older I get, the more I think, like, being alone is kind of amazing. Yeah. And <laughs> that, like... <laughs> I can understand. <laughs> and, then, and then to have, like... Um, kind of a record of that or like a like marks that come from that experience even if it's even if it's difficult it's also kind of like wow this is happening and I'm like in this um, so that's a really I think that's a really beautiful like a very moving observation um, the way you said that <laughs> okay so maybe now if you have questions for Ruha, or for me, or for the performers, because uh, some of them are still there, and if you also want to know how it was for them, maybe to do the performance or anything, just, you can. <laughs> but we can also have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be nice too. <laughs> I can bring you. The thread around your head?
you or I'm um, sorry thank you um, or you kind of like catch your throat or you know and then at some point I actually had like thread in my teeth and in my, against my tongue and because it's so fine thanks Wura <laughs> it, it really did like it was almost cutting into the tongue so I think a lot of a lot of the experience I mean it was effective for me um, performing and um, but it was also like this you know how much of it do you feel in that moment because you're also very aware of like the other performers and we were um, yeah we were also working towards that like feeling so there were 12 of us and we were working and like feeling each other's energies so it was kind of like a, a balance between the kind of restraint and the increasing distortion and the pain and the pleasure and being aware of your, yourself and your own in yourself and with the others so it was quite complex, although it was short. It was very, yeah. But, um, I had a question. <laughs> if I can, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess I I wanted to ask you or um, something we haven't talked about yet is um, actually looking, and the gaze. Um, so, um, for those of you who are here last night or who know the performance of the kissing mask. Um, you know, like where the performer sits, um, the, the mask is over the face, um, the eyes are made out of silver paper, and the layers behind. What I didn't know, although I've engaged you with your piece two years now, <laughs> um, was that the performer actually doesn't see out either. They see out. They do? Because yeah. there's a layer of like... No, okay, no, okay. they can see out, but they okay. can't see and okay. Because it's those layers are there, but not here. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. But nevertheless, so it, it has something to do with looking, looking out, looking in, yeah. um, and uh, just here. I mean, we have, um, yeah. you know, um, eyes. They're gazing in the videos, and and when we perform, we're wrapping. We it is a conscious decision or not, like whether we wrap our eyes. And some of us had our eyes wrapped, so we literally couldn't see or not see well. Um, and it, in a lot of your other paintings, it also has to do a lot with the visuality, but also making aware of how, for instance, in the left-hand side of that particular work, there is something obscuring that seeing. So either it's layered, it's complex, it's, it's a knot, it's, you know, um, so I was wondering if you could maybe say a little bit about that, like how to you that visuality yeah. also comes across in your work and what that resonates for you or how is that important? I, I, I surmise that it has a lot to do with photography and like um, I started as a photographer and I think growing up I um, was very much an observer um, because I was like the only uh, person, the only person of my kind <laughs> in a lot of situations. <laughs> so I think I, and I was quiet, so I, I, I did a lot of observing and then um, I, I, um, I think my creative artistic formation is very photographic and filmic. And even in the drawings, I think they're very filmic and very, I think about um, how things move through the frame and it's very, it's from a, almost like a wide angle view all the time. And so I think the, um, oh, and then the other thing about taking photographs is I, um, when I, when I was taking photographs, maybe at university, I often um, didn't look through the, the, the lens. And so I felt like photography was kind of a way of imagining or maybe a way of an exchange with the things in front of me that I was imagining this view. And then the camera was somehow like my body. And so there was a way to to record that, but it wasn't just the camera, it was like my body and sort of not just eyes, but like energy and history and this kind of thing. So I think that the, um, I'm, I'm at a certain level obsessed with this idea of looking and these questions of, like I had these questions about um, photography. Could you, could you take a photograph of someone who existed before the invention of photography and could you use the photographic 
technology to open something and like let a spirit in and and then can the body be that spirit and then can you record that bot that spirit through the body and so I think there's a lot of um, things about seeing and looking and framing that um, that surface in the drawings for that reason probably and also like the um, seeing even though your face is obscured and then the, the masking, different masking traditions, how they allow you to um, step in and see things differently. So like the kissing mask is a really great example and then there's also um, in Nigeria we have a lot of street masquerades and basically what that means is that if you see the dancer in the street you um, you you, there's a reverence for them and it creates space for them. So the experience of me as a woman walking in the space and being masked allows me to um, see people in a different way and move kind of freely through the streets. Mm -hmm. And it's like this exhilarating experience that you don't usually have as a woman or with a woman's body. So I think that that, um, that way of observing without the self-consciousness of being observed is really interesting and fascinating to me and still a question that I have and uh, which emerges in the performances and then I think in the drawings in a more, uh, it's just there and comes out a, a lot probably. Yeah, thank you. Um, just a really quick footnote. Um, so like, uh, just kind of off of what you just said, because um, for me, there are lots of ways of seeing, right? Um, so, I mean, most of the time we connect this with visual through the eyes, but seeing as a form of perception, and then how that perception actually involves affect or not, which is talking about that, and, and energy. So uh, for me, it's really interesting right right now. I, I realize what I'm really interested in your work in, in right now is, um, yeah, really this kind of um, perception, uh, you know, and then how it's, it's often not through visual, although it's also very much involves the visual, um, but it, you know, how that itself is complicated by other things that we cannot see, yeah. like affect. And, and it just hits you in one moment, you know, yeah. um, where you cry and then you, or, or, you know, or any other response. You're like feeling like you're right. having like this kind of... Right, and, and yeah. then sometimes when we say things like, oh, I see, we don't mean, oh, I see, I, I mean, oh, I understand, or I yeah. comprehend I, I, what you're saying. Yeah. So for me, that becomes like a really much, a, large, a much larger question of like perception and feeling and understanding and communication. Yeah. And, and that reminds yeah. me too of like, um, Something about running that I am like totally obsessed about. I'm not obsessed with running, but I love running. <laughs> but just this thing of like, I, because I, I run in Lagos and the road is really bumpy. And um, so sometimes I, I'm fascinated by the fact that you can run, you can move through a space and not look at where you're going and not fall. And you can do it for like a long time because sometimes like I'm, I'm running and I'm like looking around or spacing out and I realize it's been like say like 20 seconds and I look down and there's like shit in the road. It's like, you know, crevices and stuff. And I realize that like our bodies see, right? And know. And, and so I get, I, I sometimes run with my eyes closed which is something that I did when I was very little. I would try to bike with my eyes closed because you kind of know, so you know, you know some things without this vision. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I did run into a car. That's when I stopped doing it as a child <laughs> when I biked into a car. But, um, but you can, you can go pretty far. Actually, I can't help uh, interpreting that, like uh, because it's super interesting to see like the way you make the performance ha happen with the threads. Because when they say like, yeah, if I love you, that's because you are beautiful, and if you are not beautiful anymore, I must stop or whatever, right? <laughs> I hope I heard it right. So, do you think? It, I mean, when you could it also be a way that when the performers, when they wrap themselves that way, is also like a way to feel the emotions, like if 
love someone, being loved, or even just like um, uh, being by yourself, even just feeling emotions. Mm -hmm. And when when things wrap off, like uh, I also wonder if the performers feel like, yeah, how 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 do you feel like uh, the moment when the things drop off, like uh, relief or like uh, mm -hmm. anything? Um, well. This idea of like, I really love this idea of the ra that wrapping becoming part of a whole experience of love, of loving someone, which is like a range of things. And um, so anyway, I, I like that observation a lot. And I guess um, maybe are there, there are a few performers still here who want to answer that question or maybe a couple performers about like, does it, it's like, does it feel good when it, how does it feel when it comes off of your face? Oh, can you do the mic? It's for the video, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I was, um, I don't know, maybe it's the adrenaline of the act of performing that comes every time that when we mm, rehearsed, we rehearsed on Saturday and then um, I didn't feel that we were, or I was not feeling that I was doing it as strong as today. And today it was really like, you know, like going um, into almost cutting the skin, which was like kind of forcing you to think or to feel where, where could you place the, the thread so, so to not cut your skin. And uh, afterwards, what I felt, it was a huge need of, uh, let's see what happens, like, when this stays longer. When we were at the back, um, I thought, like, wow, this is not, I felt first that this was pulsating, you know, like, pop, pop, pop. I felt the blood come into my face, and then what could happen? That, that was my question, like, when when something is not um, it's not um, moving, and this is quite amazing with the text also, because it um, um, it generates that st stagnation mm -hmm. of like uh, I expected something and this something never came. Like you were beautiful and you're not, so this generates generates stagnation mm -hmm. and so the blood also kind of like gets trapped by the threads mm -hmm. so but it's, it's stagnation at but movement yeah but it's the like stagnation crazy. generates that. yeah 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 the, the, this contradiction is like um existing coexisting here right, yeah. so that's quite cool yeah. like, <laughs> i was like oh let's go some more but yeah the pleasure and pain oh about Cathy was talking about. Uh, what, I, what I did like uh, on your performance was the complexity of that you have love and pain and bonding all together. It's very poetic to have it side by side. And um, also when you are doing the sti stitching of on the paper, you also, um, hurting the paper. Mm. So uh, what is um, hurting things, pain, in your work? Can you <laughs> talk a little bit about that? I always feel like the paper is hurting me because it's like, it's like I'm working on the drawing and then at some point it's just like, get out, you've been here too long, we're done. But I never thought about like that puncture as like a pain to the paper. Um, but that's interesting. But I think... It's like a skin. It is like a skin, but, it's a, but that's a metaphor still. It's not... Um, yeah. But I mean, I do think about pain in... Uh, in terms of performance and sort of the endurance of it and the, um, I mean, I think pain tells us a lot of information, but pain that is, pain that we choose is much more enjoyable than um, the other kinds. 
Um, and, and that's like the pain of, of pushing yourself, I guess. But I don't, I don't think about, um, I don't think about it with the paper at all. I mean, sometimes I feel bad if I don't like something and I like throw it away. Um, but yeah. But pain is life. If you don't have pain, you cannot survive. Well, it's a contrast, but I wouldn't say pain is life. I mean, I, a, I think that's kind of a... It's a regulative. If you, don't, uh, if you don't feel pain, you will die. Sure. You would put your hand on the hot... Yeah. Sure, and, sure. Uh, maybe also with love. If you, don't put, if you wouldn't feel the pain, you would not be able to love, in a way. That's what they say. Because it's... You have to be... <laughs> I mean, this is the thing, like my friend the other day, she's like, someone was talking to her and said something and she's like, yeah, if that's what you believe, like, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but it's, it's, uh, yeah, it can be more nuanced, but I hear what you're saying. I mean, yeah. Uh, maybe it would be nice to talk um, about the mask, since it's uh, something in your title, and I think it's, uh, uh, we haven't spoke about it yet, because that's what I see in the performance work, this idea of setting up a mask, but also in terms of the content, the mask, uh, uh, in terms of camouflaging, chameleon chameleonizing, um, uh, something hidden, but as, as uh, it's coming visible again at the same time. So it's working with this space of visibility and invisibility. So, and it, in reference to the sentence, you know, uh, uh, you were so beautiful, I loved you, and now you are not beautiful, I don't love you anymore. Uh, maybe it would be nice to actually, uh, maybe you can talk more about this sentence, because for me, I have a very particular reference. Uh, of course, uh, uh, thinking about my own experience, my own biography, my own political position, what it means to me, uh, I can also see it as a relation to uh, a master uh, and a slave or something like this, and something is being un unveiled. And this idea of the mask is something to do with uh, identity. I, uh, uh, I don't really think... Uh, I don't see your work uh, at all about pain. Huh? Uh, I really see it some more about celebration and skin and trace. So the drawing and the threading and the, the texture of the paper for me is a trace of that sweat, of that movement, of that, <laughs> that breath, all of this, which I think is, you know, so she has a, uh, when it's, it's the challenge of performing sometimes, you know, it's very hard for curators because they don't know how to, uh, it's true, they don't know how to work with you, because uh, so how are we going to show this? You know, what's the documentation? And th of course, uh, the video documentation or photography of documentation does not speak at all about the work itself. Uh, and for example, in, in this work here, you can get into this body, you know, you can shake within this body, you can smell it, you can sweat with it. So I appreciate this. So maybe my question is just more of an extension into how you would want to discuss about this idea of the mask. Where is your position on, on that? Uh, and the sentence that was being said over and over again, because also I think the, uh, the, it's very important that the sentence is uh, being repeated uh, singularly, but also in the plural. Uh, and what does it mean in this context? Well, um, I'll, I'll talk first about the, the title, Every Mask I Ever Loved. It, um, that for me was about um, my relationship to drawing. So I was drawing and I was, and I was thinking about, for maybe 20, more than 20 years now, I've just been really interested in, um, not just in particular masks. Like I've been drawn to certain things, a lot of like Yoruba um, and that I have this personal relationship with, but other um, images from Nigeria. And, so, and they kind of repeat, you know, and so, um, for me, when I thought of that title, I just thought, I, at first I was like, I'll just make drawings of every mask I've ever drawn. And then I realized it was like, it's only a few, and I keep drawing them over and over and over and over again. And I'm like obsessed with this like Ife head, which isn't even a mask, it's like a bronze sculpture. But um, 
So, but that, that sentence is really about um, the kind of the potential of the drawing to become something else. So it's like, um, what does the body become in the drawing? What can happen in the drawing? Can something that I make in the drawing become something in life? Can it change something like in the world if I make it in the drawing and vice versa? And, um, and I think I, I've had this, um, this desire to both uh, obscure and reveal my face for a long time. And part of it was like growing up um, in the US in a lot of, in largely white contexts and feeling kind of either absent um, or like invisible. Um, and with that goes like a whole host of other things, uh, which include not feeling beautiful. And, and for some reason, beauty is like, we, we attach like value to beauty, right? And, um, but, but beauty is also very culturally specific. But I've been really interested in how obscuring the face allows me to move in certain ways, and um, which I can't do when you can see my face. And so I think that's sort of like an older question that comes back a lot, and it emerges in the drawings and then often in the performances. And there are specifics of that, like, in, um, in, in Nigeria, we have these, um, we have uh, secret societies that do different ceremonies and some of them are um, ancestor ceremonies where an ancestor comes into a space. And those societies are largely, like it's men only who can be part of those. And, and I became really um, interested in that. Like why can't, why can't a spirit come into a female body and why can't a woman have this experience of wearing this, um, this dress and moving around. And, um, and so I just sort of took it upon myself to, um, to riff off of these, these, these tools in a way, the masking and the costuming and what happens if you show flesh or you don't show flesh. And there it's a real, um, you have this like actual different experience if you're masked because of how people... Um, relate and respect or fear and um and so it it it's a it's a thing that changes your experience in the world and that i became really interested in so um i think a lot of the mask like the mask in performance um it's there's like a literal space that happens and then there's also just like this feeling of what happens when I obscure this thing or change it or distort it or hide parts of it. And then, um, and then in terms of the performance, I, the, the performance, there's a, there's a photographer who, who wrapped her face with thread that I saw many years ago. I think she's from Mexico or Latin America and I cannot remember her name, but I always had this image, remember this image from like 30 years ago. And, um, and I had, I mean, I've worked with thread in a lot of ways, but more recently I was looking at this Frida Kahlo painting, which is called Self-Portrait with Cropped Hair. And she's in this man's suit and she's cut her hair and it's like lying all around. And it says, um, if I loved, if you loved me, it was for my um, hair. And now that I'm bald, you do not love me anymore. And, um, and the thing about the painting is, like, she's saying this, but, like, I look at it and I'm like, oh, my God, she's fucking fine, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, she's in this man's suit, she has short hair, and it's just, like, and the painting is, like, it's just gorgeous and smart, and, like, so there's this thing about, like, beauty, but it's kind of, like, I feel a little bit like a trickster when I say that those words, because... What I'm saying is like, if I loved you, it was for your beauty, but who am I talking to? And what do I mean by beauty? Is it just this thing or is it like this thing? And, and the truth is that like, if you're not beautiful to me anymore, then I might not love you. And not that like, if you've aged or if you don't look pretty, but like, if as a person, I don't find you beautiful, then I may not love you 
because me finding you beautiful means that I love you, you know? That it's like you, the people you love are beautiful to you, right? So it's this kind of like weird contradiction. And at the same time, this performance in particular, I mean, it's like you're like destroying the face. I mean, when I first did it by myself, I was just like, this is so intense. Like, I don't recognize my own face, you know? And most of us don't have that experience of looking and then not recognizing our faces. Some people do because of experiences, but it was also like, it's, there was like a beauty in that too. So it's kind of like, uh, it's not just like the surface words, but it's like they have like a lot of things. And I think that it's like you, the more you know someone, you might know that like they weren't this wonderful person that you thought they were, but you might love them more. Like you might have this kind of like unconditional love that, I mean, gosh, life, it's just like these contradictions, you know? So anyway, it's like all of that stuff in there.